I don't know why I'm feeling so sarcastic today. I think it's because <laughs> I've had a couple. Of, I've had a couple of ibuprofen. I think that's what it is. It's 7:30 a.m. Traffic cops Lee Moody and Dan Kellett are on flood alert, 10 miles north of Leeds. We're on route to Pooling Wharfdale. Uh, the call is that overnight, due to the heavy rain, uh, there's a, a large amount of flooding. It's been one of the wettest years on record. Today, nationwide heavy floods have caused deaths on the road and trapped hundreds in their cars. Most normal, sensible people have realised that this is a, a deep flood. Don't drive through it. And you'd be amazed how many people drive through it and then get into difficulties. When we have this level of rain, um, as extreme as this, it does cause massive issues and the country can just come to a standstill and you just know it's going to be a nightmare day. They're taking over from officers who've spent all night tackling flooded roads. You know what we're saying about people driving through big floods? That looks quite deep in the middle. It doesn't look that deep at that particular time. However, that's walking across the highest point of the camber. When you start getting to the, um, the verges, that is going to be quite deep water. On board, just your unit, uh, we may be delayed somewhat. We've come down Arlington Lane, we're heading towards sort of like the White Hart. Um, we're just having to assess whether we can actually get through a flooded section of road here. Well. Depending on the volume of water, the water can actually break the road surface, it can burst pipes underneath, um, it can blow manhole covers off, it can blow drain covers off and it can cause major issues. Watch out, because you're going to get wet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do. No, that looks quite deep in the middle. You just have to, to suck it and know that you're going to get wet and and your boots may be destroyed by the end of the day. Can go one four. We're going to have to uh, try and close it. <laughs> do you want me to go and stick some cones out the other side? Because we don't want anybody coming through that, do we? No. Across Britain, there are 52 flood warnings in place, with 22 in Yorkshire. With the Highways Agency busy with road closures across the region, the priority for Lee and Dan now is to close this road as quickly as possible. Increasingly nowadays, with the amount of traffic on the road, people are very much me-focused. I need to get to where I need to get to as quickly as I can. They're not concerned about why a road is closed. They don't think about the fact that we've closed it for their safety. Hello, we're just about to close this because we're just having everybody flying around the corner and it's only going to get worse because it's still uh, it's still raining. Catch up, catch up, dogs. So I can't go through. But it's entirely up to you. You need to come far up on your boat, so I don't think... Say again. You, you You're in the 4x4, four sir. Yeah, you know on, on, on days like this, you're going to have certain people in certain vehicles that think they can drive through it. Although the flooding may not look too deep, many cars can start to float in just two feet of standing water. I think we're going to have to take the chance. I'm afraid the road's closed. Uh, it was a rather large flood. Uh. It's not long before the cops need to assist people heading to work who are stuck behind the flood. Are you OK? Do you want me to watch your back? Um, it's all right. It's not my car, it's the worst car, and I don't know how to reverse it. <laughs> oh, right. OK. okay. Just don't go forwards. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling. Do you want me to spin it round for you? <laughs> The issue that we had with this lady was it was a vehicle that she didn't drive on a very regular basis um, and it had an electronic parking brake. Oh dear, <laughs> how embarrassing. It was a case of the simplest way was for me to uh, spin it round and then give her some advice on making sure that she knew how to drive a vehicle before she, uh, she got into it. It's nice of my colleague to watch me back, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing. What a bizarre handbrake. Right, okie doke. Take my hat back, thank you very much. See you later. Okie doke, no worries. See you later.
They've coned off the road, but can they keep it closed? You, back that way. Working across the whole Yorkshire and Humberside area is the Regional Roads Crime Team. Officers Gary Panther and Paul Smith are on patrol. There's a moose loose about this house. Their unmarked car gives them more cover on country roads. A golf has just sped past, unaware that they're cops. One seven just took his vehicle, please. It was uh, travelling at a little bit of speed, but um, it was just the occupant that really caught his attention as it went past as well. Three of us keep on it. No insurance. Just spotted a golf that uh, we're travelling at speed that comes back to uh, the, the Leeds area. So uh, they just come quite quickly through the village we've just passed, so we're going to catch him up and just do some checks on, uh, on the keeper and, uh, and the driver of it. You tend to find that the cars have always gone a little bit further than you expect. Um, so if you don't see it initially, it's worth just pushing on and trying to trying to locate it and uh, second guessing the route it could have possibly uh, travelled. Yeah. If he has, he's been talking. Yeah. So oh, yeah, it's our brake lights anyway, so. He's, he's just there. Oh, he's there, look. He's there, look. The check produces further information on the driver. Looks like he's had a cannabis one in February 2012, looks like. Let me see, you, mate. Let me see what it is. Oh, yeah. So immediately, it just gives you a little bit more suspicion that there's something wrong with vehicle or driver, really. It's a bit of cat and mouse, really. You do want to catch them, and they don't want to be caught. Why? Can't park there. It'll be all right now, it's a bit fast. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Four motions. The cops' head cams capture events from a police point of view and are part of a new evidence gathering kit. Hey mate, all right? Yeah, yeah. Is it your motor? Yeah, yeah. Is it not? Just turn the engine off for a sec, mate. Yeah, sorry. I didn't you... know if you want to down there. No, you're fine. You sound... You've got your licence on you, mate, though. Yeah. Sound. Yeah, it's one of those moments you get out and you don't actually know what's going to happen, so you're always on guard and always on edge, really. I want to ask you, and I bet you know what I want to ask you. There's a strong smell of cannabis coming from the car, all right, which means you're going to be searched under Misuse of Drugs Act along with car. Yeah. Right. You're going to be searched. Is there all else other than that? No. Right. My first thoughts are, he's handed that bit of cannabis over to me far too easily. Um, as if to say, this is all I've got in here, officer. Thanks very much. Are you working at minute? Yeah. All right. How's that going, then? It's going. I'm really doing that well at the minute. Isn't it? Do you want to jump out, pal, and go stand with my mate? He's going to conduct a search, all right, obviously. Under Miss Yorkshire Drug Act, because it stinks. Have you got any pockets at all? No. No, so I'm going to just pack down, mate. Oh, yeah. Possessing a small amount of cannabis comes with a police warning or an £80 on the spot fine. So, in that tin. Somewhere. A little bit more. Yeah. I'll find it, don't worry. You can see exactly what I'm doing here and what I'm seeing and, and what I'm looking for. You get it? A warning for cannabis is one before, yeah. you said, yeah. yeah. We tend to find that if people have got quite a substantial amount of cannabis on them, they may well hand over a small amount like he is there, in a hope that we don't look any further and we just take it as that's what he's got. Well, should you get a car then? Is it I'll pay all right? Yeah, it depends. I'm trying to get onto more, more expensive wallets, you yeah. know. Higher, higher class, bit yeah, more. bit more money for me. Yeah, instead of trying to do these 10, 15 pound jobbings. Just... It's like detailing, that's where money is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. My mate had his beamer done recently, like 300 yeah, quid or something. Yeah, yeah, to proper detail. It's, it's, it's hard work, like, isn't it? Like for alloys and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You've got to make alloys gleam out to, to, yeah. to make anybody be happy about anything. It's just a, it's a nightmare, really. Yeah. Um, if we can keep them talking and occupied, it makes our job easier, really. Um, it's one of those, it's kind of a double bluff. 
Paul's talking to him there about all sorts of things and he's probably thinking that Paul's mind is not uh, where it should be but I know and Paul knows that we're concentrating on, on exactly what we should be doing and, and, and that's searching this vehicle for further drugs. I've had a look inside the car and found the metal tin which was just alongside the steering column in a small compartment underneath that contains one bag of, of cannabis. Um, we do often get it where it is like a decoy as if to say that that's all that's in the vehicle. We've got the camera on the side of his head. It's, it's providing uh, basically a point of view of exactly what we see. If we do go into searching anything and end up seizing anything, it shows exactly where we found it, the condition of when we found it and, uh, and the position really. So really it's a quite a good evidential tool for us to have. You go to yeah. Sainsbury's and you get a uh, yeah. five pound, yeah. someone's there with one bucket of water. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I can't, I can't compete with that. Yeah. We've gone to the boot and as I open the boot there's quite a lot of uh, car cleaning equipment and stuff which obviously ties in with the sort of job that he does. They've got like contracts for businesses or? Yeah, yeah. Mainly in Leeds. Mainly in Leeds. I don't really come across this as far as this way but like I said I've had a day off today so. Can you just show me the machine? I've got a What's in there mate? Birthday present. Sort of birthday present is it? Huh? It's a jumper for my girlfriend's mum. Took a little bit of time in trying to get oh, coming to that conclusion. Are you sure? Was it? I could tell by Gaz's face it was, it was definitely not a jumper. You're opening it, you have to wrap it up back up for me though. I thought it was just a complete cock and bull story to be honest. I don't feel like a jumper to me. I don't feel like a jumper. And to be honest, as I turned round and saw his face like that, I knew straight away that uh, it was something uh, in there that shouldn't be. I want to open it, pal, all right? You have to be back to Do you feel, think that feels like a jump at you? No. We know what it is, mate, anyway. Smell it. Okay. It's probably his cuffs on you, I see. It's probably his other mate. Mate, at this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of uh, pressing a class B drug in Texas supply. All right, don't have to say anything, but let me have your defence. If you want to question something, it's a later learning car. Inside the, the parcel, as you can see, it wasn't a jumper. It was quite a lot of cannabis. I've seen it before where, where drugs have been wrapped in, in um, wrapping paper like this. Um, but for some reason, as I pulled it out, I, I instantly knew that it just wasn't a, a present. If it had been a... Uh, a present for his for his mum or his relative, then I would have probably been a, a little bit sorry for him. But at the end of the day, we need to have a look and make sure. And obviously, he's trying to transport drugs in his vehicle, proposing it to be a, a, a parcel. So, no, simply, unfortunately. It looks like there's about half a kilo of it, possibly. I guess around about a thousand pounds worth. Once it was broken up into individual deals, there's obviously a fair few in there. £10 bags, probably at least 100 bags in there, so there's going to be at least £1,000 worth, I guess. People are finding it very hard at, at this moment in time with the uh, current economic climate and the need to fund their lifestyle and, and fund it in other ways, and people turn to crime, unfortunately. To evade the law, drugs are ferried through the quiet countryside. People will be, I would say, be quite shocked that somebody's been stopped in their local village and that amount of drugs has been seized. Uh, but it is going on. People do pass through these, these remote villages in, in a hope, basically, that the police aren't there. Last time you arrested me, you took my keys off me. I couldn't get in my house. Ordered? Harrogate police. Right. You let me, out of my, let me out of the cell in Harrogate with no phone, no money, no keys, and I live in Leeds. Yeah. And your, your thing to me were not my problem. Well, we're not going to be like that, by the way. Well, you were last time. Well, what it may. It'll be a case of taking the lad back to the custody suite now, booking him in, getting all this uh, exhibit seized. With the cannabis haul captured on head cam, Gary and Paul have strong evidence the driver was in possession. If proven for dealing, he could face a severe prison sentence. On rural back roads north of Leeds, Lee and Dan try to cope with one of the wettest days of the year. 
you back that way. At this point, I think we'd probably only been on duty for about 45 minutes. Um, I was already starting to get frustrated. Right, I appreciate that, but the road's closed with all the cones because you can't come back. Please make sure the cones they've been moved are back out across the road. It may seem a little bit harsh under these circumstances. We do get quite forceful with people. However, you've got to. And I've now realised my boots are as what boots I thought they were. <laughs> Days like today are really busy. We're going from one job to the next, to the next, to the next. And it's just, you don't get time to stop and think. Extremes of weather, I just, I think, make our job a hundred times worse. Rising water levels can cause a serious accident. Water, water everywhere. And not a drop to drink. Oh, should have brought the kayaks. Yeah, Perfect did. day. Under circumstances like this, where there has been heavy rainfall or quite inclement weather, you know that it's going to be a very long day. They have to keep the roads closed, motorists out of the water, and emergency call-outs down. This is the road that we were initially coming to. We got stuck further down the road at the other, the other flood. We've managed to negotiate that now and get down to this. And as you can see, it's a hell of a lot deeper than the one further down. It was next to a uh, quite a flowing river, and obviously we, you had all of the uh, the rainwater coming down from the fields as well. Um, it was completely uh, flooded from one side to the other. And now there's something else. Basically, it's just been reported from Ed, who's on the other side of the road closure, that uh, it looks like it potentially a cycling club are coming down. He's advised them that they won't be able to get through um, and that they should turn round. However, they've all put their hands up and said OK and carried on coming. With rural roads like this, we have, you do get a lot of pedal cyclists, the hardened cyclists who will go out in all weather. Now, the problem for them is any detour, especially around this area, could be massive for them. Oh, he's coming under the barrier, so we'll uh, we'll wait and see how far he gets. One four, they're going to be brave. Just about to enter the water. Oh, oh, going, yeah, going. Now we're walking. Gone. Morning. Well, fair play to you, okay, because you, you, your bike's not going to break down, okay, and. The only thing we would say is with flood water, you don't know what's going underneath with re manholes or if any pipes have burst. Okay. So I wouldn't do it, but fair play to you. Yeah. But then I wouldn't get on a bike in this weather anyway. So. No, well, we don't <laughs> let a little rain stop us. Fabulous. Take care. Now you're just making it difficult going through the deepest bit right in the middle. One for just for information, we're closing at Pool Road uh, with Kaylee Hall, Charlie Alpha Lima, Echo Yankee. It's not long before one frustrated motorist decides to go for it. No, no, no. Well, that's why the most closed sign is on. He gets a bit wound up by him sometimes, but that's just Lee. <laughs> I do sometimes get a little bit frustrated with uh, with people when they can clearly see the roads closed they know why it's closed and we're only doing it for their safety but they don't appreciate that have you driven past the road closed sign well that's why you're having to reverse back then isn't it yeah it, it clearly tells you sir we can't do much more all right i tend to be quite chilled i don't let them wind me up it, it doesn't really achieve anything by getting annoyed with them <laughs> you laughing at me with my help my kit had increased on that day um, because it was raining, uh, I decided to put a, uh, a hat on to try and keep some of the rain off, which didn't go down very well with, uh, with Dan. This is what I've got to put up with every day. It's so aggressive today, Lou. Why am I aggressive? <laughs> on this one day across Britain, emergency breakdown services deal with more than 5,000 incidents. 400 are cars stuck in flood water. It looks like the problem here has been people purposefully blocking the drains. We found a bottle shoved up one, another one was blocked up with a rag. There's a big hole here. I'm going to get absolutely drenched now, aren't I? Yeah, possibly. 
it's no um, secret that this country is getting wetter by the year. We're getting a lot more rainfall. Um, it can't cope with it at the moment. It's certainly not something that we're we're going to get rid of, and I think it, it, days like that are going to become more and more commonplace as the years go on. The road policing units deal with Britain's busy roads. Lee and Dan have just heard that something's happened on one of the major roads into Leeds. We've had a call from an elderly female. Um, basically, she's been in the car with her husband, and it looks like her husband may have had a stroke at the wheel. Um, he's left the road and crashed into a lamppost. It was looking quite serious. I think information had been passed that the, the gentleman was unconscious in the vehicle. We may look at having to uh, close the road for quite some time while we conduct the investigations that we need to conduct, obviously given the medical complications and the age of the parties involved. Figures show that every five minutes someone suffers a stroke in the UK, nine out of 10 are over 55 years of age. When it occurs behind the wheel of a car, the consequences can be fatal. He's unconscious still. Just confirming he's unconscious, that's received, thank you. Obviously we're not at the scene, we can only go on the information that's being passed, but all the time that's heightening our uh, stress levels, if you like, because we're, we're having to think about what we're going to do when we get there. An ambulance has arrived. All right, the gentleman's in the ambulance and... Uh, right, OK. Is this chap still unconscious? No, no, no. The gentleman wasn't still unconscious. However, there was concern that he may have passed out, leading to the collision. He's not still unconscious. No. No, they think he might have lost consciousness oh, just as the collisions happened. At the moment, we think he's all right on the back. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe he, he more than likely he's had a, he's had a TIA mini stroke. Right. All right. Yeah. A TIA, or transient ischemic attack, also known as a mini stroke, may have caused the driver to black out. How are we doing? Um, he's complained of tummy pain since lunchtime today. Yep. Um, and then he says it just got really unbearable. And he says, and then he says the last thing he remembers is turning around at the island at the bottom. Right. Um, but I was just going to have a word with his partner to see what she knows about what happened. Is he? Am I able to jump on and just have yeah, a quick yeah, chat with him? Yeah, is that all right? Definitely. Yeah. She's in the second car back. It's still not clear if the driver has suffered a stroke. Have you eaten anything different to normal? Any sort of anything more fat about any pastry or a lot more sort of spicy things or <laughs> and I think you've had them before, so that's nothing new. With Lee on the ambulance, Dan speaks with the passenger. It's your husband and yeah, your partner, okay. We just need his date. What's his full full name? You've got to be sort of careful how you deal with the other people involved, especially family members in a situation like this. His partner was saying that basically he's, he's gone a bit funny. He kept saying he felt ill. Yeah. She said pull over now, I'll be back, I'll be back. He's got better now, I feel really ill now. Yeah. Uh, and then she said he's just gone completely vacant. Just well, he's, he's, I mean, he's on the back of the ambulance and he keeps going in and out. He's, he's still conscious, but they're just having to, they're concerned. They don't seem to have any concerns. Do well, they? They, I think they're having a few more now because his blood pressure keeps dropping. The gentleman's partner was still in our vehicle. She's obviously concerned, still shaken up by the collision. But obviously, the longer we're there, and the longer her partner was in the back of the ambulance, she was getting more concerned as to uh, as to what was going on. He's just having some checks at the moment. Um, his, his blood pressure is a little bit up and down, so they're just doing another couple of checks, which is why I've come off. They're concerned about the driver's condition, so make a decision. Hello. Graham wants to call it. I'm going to go shut road. If you can tell Panda to reverse down and shut this junction here so we can't get out. So the decision was made until we were happy that he'd got down to the hospital and had been thoroughly checked out, that we were going to close the road um, and deal with it as a, a serious incident. Under the circumstances, it has to be investigated. Um, if it had have subsequently died, we'd have been called on to answer to the coroner as to the cause of the collision. 
I don't know how you want to do it or how you want to say it. We need to close the road. We're going to treat it as a potential at the moment right. just because of his age. When we're saying we're treating it as a potential, it, we try not to use that term in front of people at the time, um, injured parties, etc. Basically, what that means is we're treating it as a potential fatal. It's a precaution, but Lee is aware that the action may cause even more concern for the driver's partner. I don't know if you want to tell her that you, you're just stopping traffic from coming up while we're here or yeah, what, however you I'll, want to put I'll it. word it nicely. Yeah. 2-2, two, two, just for information, we're going to be closing the ring road um, at the Barrick Road uh, roundabout. Um, we've just spoken to uh, supervision, so just for information of anybody that might be responding, they won't be able to come up this way. If we put some tape across here, if, would you just be able to hang in this junction yeah. for us, just to stop anybody from coming? Why he's crashed, no one's certain. Tests on the road and hospital checks might provide some answers. Out of the city, Traffic cops Mark Claxton and Andy Barron receive reports of an accident near Hebden Bridge. Audi TT Quattro Coupe in black. What channel is that? Um, Calderdale Two. If you want to tell them we're going to. Yeah, we're working nights. It's a particularly dark, cold, and miserable night. Um, in fact, I think it was uh, it, it was literally freezing. During winter months, there's a threefold increase in accidents on Britain's roads. The lines are down, the vehicle's on its roof. We're listening to it, um, getting more and more information coming through on the radio that there's uh, power lines involved as well. On arrival, it, it was a mess. Uh, there were a lot of things to do and consider, um, a lot of hazards. Hey, you all right? Is it a power line or is it a foam wire? No, it's a power line. It's a power line. Yeah. It's pitch black. Uh, emergency services are there, ambulance and fire brigade. Looks like the car's failed to negotiate this uh, left-hand bend. It's gone through a wall. It's taken out a power cable and it's somersaulted onto its roof. The priority is to get the scene safe, uh, to get the batteries disconnected, to get the power lines cut, um, and, and then assess what we've got and make sure there's nobody else injured. Residents come out to have a look. There's no sign of the driver or any passengers. We heard uh, uh, what sounded like an aircraft coming past the house and then the loud bang and all the electric went. When I came out, there was uh, two people running up the road, well, walking up the road. I shouted to if anybody was hurt and they just ignored me and walked off. First of all, why have they run off? Is it a case of um, the car stolen? He's got it wrong and crashed it. Um, and they've got to run away and decide um, what they'll do about it later, or is it that they've been drinking? We still have a duty of care to search the surrounding area and make sure that they haven't collapsed somewhere in a nearby field, because if they had collapsed and we hadn't looked for them, uh, there is a, a good possibility they would be de they'd be dead in the morning with hypothermia. Areas such as this where generally built-up cities and things, you can you can differentiate immediately what's a power line and what is a telephone line. But if you look over there, the, the line that's been demolished looks forever just like it would be a British telecom line, but it isn't. It's an electricity pylon. And that's how a lot of houses and homes out here actually have their supply connected. So as you can see, it's now darkness up and down the street. So it's caused a lot of damage and it's put a lot of people out at this time of night and in this cold weather um, without any power to their homes at the moment. As far as I'm concerned, you don't roll a car to that extent, causing that much damage, completely snapping in half one of those wooden posts that supply electricity to them. You don't do that at 20, 25 or 30 mile an hour. I thought it was actually a lot more serious, like there'd been somebody seriously hurt. I just can't believe they just walked away from it and didn't say anything. <laughs> It's just unbelievable. Yeah. It, it would happen when it's minus two. And I've just, I've left the window open as well. I've left the window open <laughs> in the house. They've found the driver. We know where this lad is now. Yeah. He's throwing up, so we're going to go to his house, which is just out road, make yeah. sure he's okay. 
Invariably, people who were in shock or have done something, they always want the comfort of home, so they will run like a, a rabbit does to its warren. If you somersaulted like that, I mean, oof. yeah, I'd probably get him checked anyway and see. The fact that he's now at home is suggesting that the vehicle isn't stolen, but there's still got to be a reason as to why he's, he's left the scene and run to or, or gone to where he has. With the ambulance crew checking on the car driver, Mark and Andy focus on the rest of the damage. The silver car, the Jeep that uh, this Audi's hit, do we know who it is, who it belongs to? Have they come forward at all? Valerie Harris, she lives at number five. It was a mighty crash and all the lights went out because that's uh, an electric cable they pulled down. Have it landed on my car first. Well, to me, it looks like it's written off. One of the neighbours has put the kettle on, so we'll have it brew. And... They were good, a good community spirit there. They, they worked together, they clubbed together well and uh, the morale seemed quite high with the residents there. They all seemed to know each other. The difficulty is uh, recovering it. It's uh, a massive inconvenience to this, this owner of this car, which I'm trying to make slightly better for her, because at the moment all she's seen is a lot of uh, fluorescent jackets stood around not doing anything. At least minus one degrees at the moment. It's, it's cold, it's bitter. Uh, and when they're losing the electric like that, they're also losing the, the combination boilers that a lot of these houses will be. So, in effect, they've got no heating, no light, no TV. The cost involved with that will be absolutely thousands of pounds, from the police call out to the ambulance crews to the fire brigade, the cost and the people involved um, in having to sort that lot out is absolutely massive. The driver isn't seriously injured. He's been lucky. A few feet either end back of me, he could have gone straight down into a ravine. It's just open fields, extremely big steep bankings, terrible weather conditions. If he'd have gone down there, he would have somersaulted and rolled. Uh, still a fairly spectacular collision, but yeah, to have got out from a sports car like that after rolling it how he has, uh, and managed to walk away and get himself home, quite miraculous really, yeah. Back in the city, Dan and Lee wait for news on the driver who had a suspected stroke at the wheel. He crashed into a lamppost, how is he at the moment? He's all right. We're just going to phone and decide which hospital to take him to. Cause right. We're not quite sure. We've closed the road because we're treating it as a potential. Right. At the moment, just given the fact that we're not 100% sure how he is. Had he been a younger, younger guy, um, we, we may have looked at it slightly differently. But obviously, because of his age, his previous medical history in that we've been informed he'd had strokes in the past, and then obviously the issues that he'd had throughout the day. When did he last have a stroke? Two years ago. Right. Oops, watch that door. It's still not clear if the cause of the crash is a stroke or food poisoning. The collision investigation team is at the scene. They keep the road closed so tests can be completed, but it's a Saturday evening on one of Leeds' busiest roads. Last thing we want to do is leave people stuck on a Saturday evening in loads of traffic. So they're going to have to be waiting a little bit longer, but if we can try and evenly get it through, everybody will be a little bit happier, hopefully. Were there other factors that caused the crash? They examined the vehicle, but they also examined the road surface, and they use all their electronic gadgets, basically, to map out the road surface. What they'll be doing is taking measurements of how wide the road is, how long it is, marking all of the uh, the white lines, any debris that may be on the road, any potholes. Okay, yeah. Rob's now just uh, placing a device in the vehicle called Skidman, uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to do a series of skid tests with the vehicle. They'll basically drive down the road at speed uh, and then slam the brakes on as hard as they can, which will cause the vehicle to skid to a stop. Oh, top foot bumper gun. Is this? Can he come off forwards? This is taking our bumper off. The wheels are pointing in the same direction. It's always better to do it in the vehicle that's been involved in the collision because obviously that gives you an exact and true reading of that vehicle. 
but unfortunately it's too extensively damaged and it just isn't safe to do so. So what they'll do is they'll do the same procedure but use the police van, um, which still gives you an indication of the quality of the road surface uh, and the level of grip here today, which we can still use. You made me laugh. <laughs> that is my entire aim in life, done to keep you happy. <laughs> to members of the public, it can sometimes look like they're just having a bit of a laugh flying up the road and uh, seeing how much they can break, but it's all about checking the surface of the roads. The driver is recovering. Now, Lee and Dan want to know why he blacked out at the wheel. Can you remember much more of what happened? Travelling up the roads, sea cross, and at that point in time, I don't remember much for about. From then, I don't know how long it was, but yeah. I must have blacked out at that point and yeah. veered off the road mm -hmm. and you found me. You're looking a lot better, than you, you, yeah. you're a bit more coherent than you were on the ambulance as well. Depending what they say tomorrow, or when they've checked you tonight, will depend on whether we make a referral to the DVLA for you to have a, a medical examination yeah. by them for continued use of your licence. What we need to be happy with is that the issue that's caused the collision on this occasion has been an isolated incident, i.e. about a food poisoning, and it's not an underlying medical condition that he has um, potentially due to his age. And the last thing we want to do is say that you can't drive. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll wait to find out what the doctors say and, it's, and even then it's not our decision, we'll just make a referral to the DVLA and they might turn around and say they just want one of their doctors to check you out. No, thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, no, it's okay. Quite, uh, Sorry to put you in No, it's not because of... It's what we get paid for, so it's not a problem. At the end of the day, we're glad it's ended up like this rather than any other way, so not a problem. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Oh, See you later, right. take care. We've spoken to him, uh, he's got all his family around him now, he's very jovial, he's, uh, he seems very happy. He's hooked up to a drip, uh, he hasn't been seen yet, he's been booked in, he's just waiting to be seen, but he seems a lot happier. Um, so whether it's just been a case of food poisoning or something like that, we're, we're not sure of at the moment, but obviously at the end of the day it's all about his safety and everybody else's safety on the road, but fingers crossed it's nothing too serious and he'll be uh, back out and about shortly. After further tests, the mystery is finally solved. It transpired that the gentleman may have eaten something that uh, had disagreed with him, which had, had caused some, some medical issues, and that, that was what had, had caused him to black out. Uh, he, he was put on a course of medication, um, and in the, the following couple of days uh, was back to normal. Look at these boys here. <laughs> Me and Gaz both like a sing song in the car and uh, just a way of passing time sometimes. Reports come through of an attempted theft close by. A suspected bicycle thief has been disturbed at a nearby garage. I'll be wrong just here. Road, got yeah. When that call come in and we were nearby, it's so you do get a little bit of uh, adrenaline and wanna wanna take part in it really. Yeah, he's on camera, he's just going on uh, this side of the bridge from Tesco's garage. Oh, yeah. Uh, Which way is it? Left, left, left. <laughs> the reporting police officers are already following on foot. Yeah, There's a, um, a divisional officer just shouted up to say that uh, they're chasing a gentleman on foot who's just tried to, uh, to steal a pedal cycle. Um, we're literally just round the corner, so we're making our way there now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to detain this lad. Zulu 2-2, uh, that's me, thank you. Uh, that's gone from Tesco's uh, over parts, but street bridge. Oh, for uh, CCTV, on the roadside. I can't, there's a car out my ass, Gary wears a head cam to record events for use as potential evidence. Park Street. Whereabouts has he gone? Uh, X-ray Tango 17, it's the male blue uh, jacket, jeans, red rucksack, 
It's behind, it's behind, it's behind, stop, stop. The adrenaline starts to go, you're on high alert as it were, and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be able to catch the lad. Come here, you Gaz obviously saw that I was chasing him over the railings and, uh, and he decided to take a path that led him um, around the outside and so we did sort of a bit of a pincer on him. I'm looking at where he is and looking at that gap in the fence and then looking at where he is and then the gap in the fence again and I'm thinking, I'd better get there before he does. Put your arm out. Thank you. are under arrest, mate, on suspicion of attempt theft of a pedal cycle, all right? Uh, you got anything on you shouldn't have on your sharp or all that's going to work me or you? Needles in my bag, that's about it. Sure, mate. Needles in my bag. Needles in your bag. You've not got any pockets or what, have you? No. All right, I'm just asking because you're going to be searched shortly, all right? Yeah. We don't know whether those needles are capped, so it's another thing for us to be uh, to be aware of. Yeah, you stand you up short on it, alright? Now they have him under control. The suspect and the contents of his bag are searched further. Clear off, case, Paul. Watch that bag, Paul. Right. Are they loose in there, mate? Or? No, no, no. Which pocket it needles in? The big bag. He's told us that he's got some um, needles uh, for drug use in. Uh, the rear of his bag, so I was just uh, asking him which pocket. I didn't want him to uh, to put my hands in anywhere that I might get uh, a nasty shot. Are they all capped like or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to get that camera off my stuff, please. Yeah, no, it records what we've done, I've told you, mate. Keep still. Stand still. No, I won't. Yeah, well, you'll have to, won't you? Why will I? She's not going to be going anywhere. So? He's got some articles in his pocket, some screwdrivers, uh, that he's obviously tried to uh, attack the lock with. So I've seized them at the moment and he'll be Given a bit better search in custody, he's got a lot of needles. He'll be stealing a bike to fund his drug habit, I'd have thought. Nationwide, more than a third of all robbery and shoplifting is carried out to fund an addiction. The cops now need to get the suspect to custody. Vehicle? Yes, please. Have you got your documents on you? Yes, Just come say it in car a minute. You'll keep you along. Backseat, backseat, backseat. Checks on the man's car reveal he may be committing further offences. Insurance not held. Um, MOT expired. Oh. MOT expired. 12. Oh. With a date of first registration Yep, yeah, I'll get back to you. Is MOT expired? Uh, well, that's least of your problems. No, um, no, no, there's no, no insurance. MOT on it. West Yorkshire is one of the worst areas in the country for motor insurance offences. In 2012, more than 3,500 motorists were prosecuted here for driving without cover. Right, have you, have you MOT'd it? Yes. Since August of this oh, year? Definitely. I went to try my MOT. I've actually not put it there. It should be in my car. Right. I think we may be confused here with road tax yeah. as oh. opposed to MOT. Oh, there's a road tax on it. My yes. road tax is not dead. Simon goes in search of the documentation. It's just said the MOT certificate's in the car, so I'll just come to get out and have a look for it. Um, so we just need to verify who he is. Driving without an MOT is now a mandatory £100 fine. But if the driver is also found to be uninsured, he could be facing an additional £200 fine and six points on his licence. You're not named upon being the owner of the vehicle. Yeah. There is no insurance link to the vehicle, and the vehicle is showing no MOT. So there's numerous offences disclosed at this moment in time, and I need to be able to verify that you are who you say you are. OK. Yeah. So do you have any form of identification upon you? Driving no licence, insurance, or... I don't have or no identification on me. I was just coming from town. I don't need passport? To coming... Yes, I do have a passport. You have a passport. Excellent.
you go. You want to see if you're MOT's in there? Yeah, 26, could you uh, run this driver through, please, details when you're ready? I'm not writing on it, is it? You've got no, no. So. That's my writing, that's oh. yours. Is this the insurance? Yeah, yeah. I'll give him a ring in a second. The driver's identity is confirmed, but Chris and Simon still need to verify the information on the police national database is correct. Well, where's your, where's your mid? Yeah, provisional. Yes, thank yeah. you. Get back to you. And now the computer says he doesn't have a full licence. You have a provisional driving licence. Because recently I just, I, just, I just got my application for uh, what we call international driving licence. I'm having international driving licence mm -hmm. uh, from Ghana. That's, that's why I'm right. driving it. Have you, have you since you came to the country eight yeah. years ago, you say? Yeah. Have you passed a driving test? Driving test for what? For Ghana? What, what, no, 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 no. I was no. getting my international licence. It's been an issue. Right. right. It's only valid for a year, that. You've been here nine yeah. years. So yeah, your, your provisional bro. Takes over. Uh, uh, boss, I, I, sorry, sorry for calling, bro. I just started. I, I just started driving because I got uh, international driving Mr. license. You can even see Mr. my. You cannot drive in the United boss, Kingdom. Boss, just let me finish, no, 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 please. No, no, just I let understand me... what you are saying, but I've not been driving seven years no, or, or eight years ago. Right, I wasn't driving at all. Don't matter. You're not oh, listening boss, to me. You can even see my distance when it was issued. You? You're not listening. Okay. Once you have been a resident. In the United Kingdom, yeah. more than 12 months, mm -hmm. you need to exchange your international license for a UK driving license. What am I? What am I feeling to comply now? What you're not. You you're not got a license. You're not allowed to drive. When, when you're I have a provisional license, li you're not. No, you're not listening to me. Your international driving license has expired. Yeah, I heard it's PC Binks from the West Yorkshire Police. I uh, we've just stopped a vehicle that's uh, showing no insurance on the. Uh, on the police national database. Just wondered if you could check it out for me, please. While Simon checks with the Motor Insurance Bureau that the driver is also uninsured, 60 miles away in Hull. Come here! A chase through the back streets of Hull has ended with Gary and Paul catching a suspected bicycle thief. He's carrying 50 drugs needles and being detained until transport arrives to take him to custody. Which one of you is fast enough to get him there? Pretty much more. Yeah, you got him here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it's a scale of fence. It's a scale of fence, like you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, it was twelve foot, wasn't it? <laughs> it was about six stone. That's why he uh, it got him first. There's quite a lot of banter that goes between me and Paul, and if you're not enjoying it and you're you're not having a laugh, and the motivation to do the job in there as well, and I think it keeps us going. I, our banter. Circumstances. Circumstances are this um, gentleman has been uh, cited um, trying to steal a pedal cycle on Park Street close to Tesco's. Is uh, being chased by a PCSO. He's tried to steal somebody's bike, and that bike could be somebody's bike who's travelled to work on it. That could be his mode of transport to get to work every day. We need to catch these people and stop them doing what they're doing. They cause massive amounts of misery to all sorts of people. With the suspect now in custody, thoughts turn to the foot chase. Right place, right time. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, give Gaz the easy, easy run through the, the flat bit while I went over the, the steeples. <laughs> yeah. You've, well, you've seen Opfuls, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> to some people it might seem like a minor crime but it is a, a massive problem that uh, seems to be getting bigger really and it's uh, an easy way for uh, drug addicts to, to get easy money by selling a bike on for 20, 30 quid and getting, uh, getting the drugs they can use that day. We obviously do target the higher level, level criminal but at the end of the day if crime's happening and we're, and we're there we'll deal with it, it's, it's no problem, it's what we're here for as well so um, we, we do tackle all crimes and they all are interlinked. He's obviously got a quite high uh, drug addiction uh, with the amount of needles etc that he's had on him. It might be a chance for him to actually sort himself out and get some help while he's in custody uh, with a drug referral worker. It's estimated five million burglaries and robberies are prevented through successful drug treatment programmes across the country every year. Back in Leeds, 
checks have confirmed the Red Rover driver who ran two red lights in front of the cops is unlicensed and uninsured. Listening, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you're not mentioned when questions from the for line of court. Nowadays, rather than arresting motorists committing driving offences and taking them into custody, police interview them at the roadside and report them straight to court. Do you understand what I've said to you? Come on, man, give me a ticket. Do you understand please. what I've said to you? I didn't hear nothing of what you said, so you can say it again. Right. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm can your defence. Can I just you're talk to you even uh, no, from you? No, I'm interviewing you. I am interviewing okay, you. Every time you, talk, every time you talk over me, yeah. I start again. So wait, when I'm ready, you can start. Can't I talk before you start reading me all this thing like I'm in the movie? You're already recording me anyway. You said you wanted to give me a ticket. Eh? I know I'm talking to you. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question from something like to line in court. With his rights finally read and accepted, Chris interviews the driver. If anything happens to this guy, I'm going to sue you, man. You what, sorry? Sorry? Was that a threat? How can I threaten you? You are threatening me. How can I threat you? I Was that a threat? threat? Was that a threat? How can I threat you? I'm in your car, man. You're telling me how can I threat you? You are threatening me, you saying I'm threatening you. You have guns, you have everything. And I got nothing, you saying I'm threatening you. Right. Come on, man. I haven't got a gun. With his interview concluded, the driver is now asked to provide a fingerprint to verify his identification when he appears at court. I'm now asking you, will you provide your fingerprint to prove that you were present in relation to this interview? Boss, let's be fair to each other. Why do you need my fingerprint? Right, at this moment in time, yeah. I cannot verify who you are. The issue that we're going to have yeah. in the future is when you go to court for this offence, yeah. you saying it wasn't me. Ah. You, you took everything from me. You're even trying to pick my wife's car. I said, okay, go on. Right. And so you're are you, to do are you willing to provide a fingerprint or not? And I said, if I say no, you're going to arrest me, yeah? Oh, Any boss? A good deal. You guys, man, you are making me look like I don't have no right. Are you going to give me your fingerprint to prove that you are the person I've interviewed at the roadside yeah, or not? You, uh, boss, what, uh, why, why are you trying to get me? Why are you doing this to me? To prove that you are the person that I've interviewed at the roadside. So right now you call me, I'm a criminal, you have to uh, uh, inject me and everything. What is going on? Right, since the fact that you're not being very helpful... I'll you're going to lock me up? You're going to let me... You're, like, are you? you're going to let me finish, okay. because all you do is interrupt. You're very rude. Oh, you are no, very rude. rude. You just, interrupt stressed, all the time. Man. Yes. You interrupt hey, wait, all the time. We're going to get the lantern, fingerprint man. machine down, the lantern. I'm going to put you on the lantern. In your office in Bradford? You're not even listening to me, are you? You're, you're in a different zone to me, completely. Oh, no, no, that's a long thing. I'll give you this thing. Mm -hmm. You're going to take me... Right, index finger. Every, everywhere. Right, index finger, please. Yeah. Into the pad. On there. Don't bother, mate. He's giving his fingerprint now. Sign there for me to I'm say that. I'm not signing it. You say you want my... my well, fingerprint. I need that, because that's no, no, your no, fingerprint. No, 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 no. Boss, you, see, you see, now you're changing your mouth. You say you want right. this, I've done that. Right. I'm not signing it. That's your fingerprint. I need yeah. you to sign that that's no, no. your fingerprint. You say you want one, I've given you that. I'm not right. signing it. Anything you said I should have done it, but it's for signature, I don't sign my signature. So you're refusing to sign it? You said put it there, I've done it. I'm not signing it, boss. Right. OK. But you refused. I'm not signing it. To sign. No problem. Right, right, yeah, let me finish it, don't we? Yeah. Despite the man's refusal to sign, he will still be reported to court and his car is going to be confiscated for being unlicensed and uninsured. How difficult can you make a straightforward job? Yeah. Across the UK, police seize more than 2,500 uninsured vehicles a week. But still, there are 130 deaths and more than 26,000 injuries caused by uninsured drivers every year. The man in the Red Rover was disqualified from driving for six months and fined £125 for driving unlicensed, uninsured and without an MOT. The man who ran from Gaz and Paul in Hull was charged with attempted theft of a pedal cycle. He was fined £35 with a £15 victim surcharge. 
The driver who crashed into a power line was fined £525 for failing to stop at an accident and driving without due care and attention. 